So as you guys know, content creation is on the rise and it is so easy to create content nowadays because of this powerful device in the palm of our hands. All right, so this is a video that actually continues the series of Filmic Pro V7. And actually I'm talking about how to color grade the log footage out of that app today. So we're gonna actually be doing that in DaVinci Resolve. And guys, I am gonna be using a pay plugin today, but I promise it's not gonna be this crazy thing to do. Now, if you guys are actually interested in following along step by step as I go throughout this process, you can download the footage below in the description. Okay, up on opening DaVinci Resolve for the first time and opening your new project, this is what you're gonna see. So what we wanna do first is go over here to this little icon at the bottom and we want to set our project settings. So today we're gonna be talking about editing mobile content for social media. So we're gonna set this aspect ratio to vertical and we're gonna go over here and we're gonna just make sure that this is at 1080 by 1920. The next thing we're gonna do is make sure that our frame rate is at 23 frames per second. Now, typically I upload my content at 29 frames per second, but if you're doing 23 frames per second, that just ensures that if you have video coming from your phone that was shot at 23 frames per second, then it's not gonna look jittery if you're trying to play it back at 30 frames per second. So I recommend setting this to 23 frames per second because that's gonna cover most video frame rates. Next, we're gonna go over here to image scale. So the setting that we wanna make sure that we have on over here is scale full frame with crop. This is gonna make sure that our entire image is filling up the screen. So coming over here to our last setting that we wanna adjust is color management. So we wanna make sure that this is at DaVinci YRGB color managed. So hitting save, we now have our project set up the correct way. Now, as soon as you open up DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna be open up to the cut page. I like to do most of my editing over here in the edit page. So clicking over there, we're then gonna open our media on our computer, and we're just gonna drag and drop those folders right over here. And then you wanna make sure that you hit don't change. Okay, so first we wanna throw these clips on the timeline. Now you can see exactly what I meant by it's gonna fill the entire frame with the video. So we just want to go over here to Inspector, and if you don't see this, then you wanna click this dial right up here, and that's gonna open up Inspector. And we just wanna position our video exactly where we want it to be, and I like it right there. Now to cut, what I will do is hit Command B. That's gonna split the clip right in the middle, and now I can delete this extra stuff on the end. Next, we're gonna go over to our next clips and we're gonna do the same thing. So again, I'm just gonna double click on this video and that's gonna allow me to preview it right here. Now, I can just throw this on a timeline from right there and then again, make sure that it's framed exactly how I want it to be and in this case, it actually is. So now I'm gonna find a spot where I wanna cut, Command B. And you just continue to do the same thing with the other clips. Now let's say for instance, you don't want the sound on these videos. There's a few different ways you can go about that. You can hit the mute button right here and that's gonna make sure that any audio on these tracks will not play. So typically if I know I'm not gonna use the audio on my clips, what I'll do is whenever I'm playing back the video before I actually throw it on the timeline, if you come down here, you'll see this video icon. If you drag that video icon down, it only grabs the video. Vice versa, if you go over here and you only drag the audio over, you're only gonna get the audio. So that's a cool little trick that's gonna save you some time. Now if you didn't do that, what you can do is actually hit this keychain button right here, select both of the tracks you wanna delete, and then delete it. Basically all that's gonna do is unlink everything that is attached to each other. For instance, the video was attached to the audio, so we were able to only select the audio and delete it. Okay, so while we're over here, I'm gonna show you a few other things that you can do. The first thing that we're gonna look at is stabilization, because these clips are a little bit shaky. So the way you actually stabilize in DaVinci Resolve is by going over here to the inspector, you wanna scroll down, and right here under stabilization, you just wanna hit the stabilize button and see what results you got. That is much better than before. And if you want better results, then you can just simply drag this all the way over and then drag smooth all the way up and you're gonna get more stable footage. So now let's say you wanna put a text animation on your video. If you go over here to effects, you then can go over here to titles and you have different text options that you could do. One of them that I like to use a lot is this box right here. So I'm gonna drag it over and then I'm just gonna play back 
and you see you get this nice text animation. Now you can also do other text animations. The one that I'd use the most is this regular text right here. I'll drag that on screen and I'll just type in my day, select my font, change the color of it as well to whatever you want it to be. And then you can also go down here and you have different options. If you want a stroke around the text itself or you want to do a shadow, it's already turned on. All you have to do is adjust the offset just like that. Or let's say you don't want a shadow and you just want a completely black background. You can also just go over here to background and adjust the height and then you can get a background like that. So I'm going to turn this off for now. I'm going to use this and to actually adjust the position, you can go up here to position and just scoot that guy up. Adjust your sizing of the text and there you go. So let's say you want it to fade on or off the screen. Literally all you'll do is come over here and if you get really close to the edge, you'll see this white icon appear. Just drag that over and now you're going to see it just fades on or off. Now there's another way that you can do this as well. On any clip on the timeline, you can just go to the edge, click whenever you see it highlighted, right click, and if you hit add 24 frames or whatever length you want, it's gonna add a transition for you that basically does the same thing. But this way, if you have multiple animations, you can make sure that the timing is consistent whenever it leaves off screen. All right, so next we're gonna move over to audio. So right here I have an actual voiceover and if we click on that and we drag it down here, now we can actually listen to what that voiceover sounds like. So we had a ton of fun at the Butterfly Park and I was super happy to go with my wife. So I love that. I'm just now gonna trim everything so it fits within this voiceover that I done. So again, if you don't have anything selected and you hit Command B, we can delete everything and then if we go over here we can delete everything before and then if you click on the empty space and hit delete that's going to bring the clip back so now let's go over to the audio tab clicking over here we can see we have this one track on the timeline so if you look right here you can see that the audio is playing out of only one of the tracks i'm going to right click and then i'm going to go down here and hit change type to mono there we go. Now if you play it back, you will hear that it's coming out of both sides of the speakers. So now let's say that you have some background noise going on. They actually have some new features within DaVinci Resolve that helps clean up those issues very quick. So if we go over here, we can actually turn on these track effects right here. Now if you don't see this, click on these dots right here. Go over here and you want to click effects and it's going to give you these options. So simply you can just turn on these guys and if you just click the red button, they're honestly gonna do a pretty good job right out of the gate. Now, if you wanna do some more fine tune settings, you can just click on them and you can adjust them as so. So let's say it's doing too much on the voice. Then I typically will bring this down to 50 or even 30% as well as over here on a dialogue leveler. And basically what this dialogue leveler is gonna do is make sure that whenever you're talking really, really low or you're talking really, really loud, it's gonna make those audio tracks the same consistency. And this is super important for someone who's doing podcasts or things like that because you don't want someone turning up their volume or turning it down just to watch your content. That could get pretty annoying over time. Typically, I don't adjust any settings on here because it works pretty good by just turning it on. Last, I go over here to EQ and I just wanna select one of the presets. So I'm a male, so I'm gonna hit dialog male and there you go. If you do just these three things, you're gonna have pretty good audio. And the last thing that I wanna say, in case you guys have some audio that's too loud or too low, is you wanna go over here to your audio track, right click, and you wanna hit normalize audio levels. Typically, I will do true peak, and I would do negative three. So I'm just gonna normalize that. So that's pretty much it for audio. You can obviously tweak all of these settings as you want, and honestly, DaVinci Resolve is so powerful when it comes to audio and also color grading, which is what we're diving into next. So if we go backwards over here to the color tab, we can see our clips. Now, if you can't see this for any reason, you can just turn it on by clicking clips right up here at the top, or if you wanna see your timeline, you can also do that. 
Typically, I will turn off timeline. Now also, if you're not seeing this screen full size, it's probably because you have one of these windows open. So just make sure you close those so that you can see your picture full size. So now we're actually gonna jump into the color grading process. And don't be afraid. I know that all of this could look a little bit scary, especially if you're a beginner, but I'm gonna make this really easy for you. So these over here are called nodes. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna create two more nodes. Now you can think of nodes as Photoshop layers. You're just stacking different effects or different colors or whatever you wanna put on these nodes, you can add to them and you can stack them. And the node before it affects the one in front of it. That is very important to know. So now we're gonna create two more nodes. And to do that, we're gonna hold Option and we're gonna hit S and we're gonna hit S again, and that's gonna create our two nodes. Next, you wanna go over here to effects. Now today, we're gonna to be using something called Cinematch. Basically, this is gonna take your footage, identify it, and then match it to any other camera that you want. This can be any high-end camera, any mirrorless camera, and honestly, I found this much easier to edit my footage when using this. So scrolling all the way down to our effects, we're gonna see Cinematch. We're gonna take that and add that to our first node. So going up here to Sensor Match, we're gonna choose the way we shot our phone footage. So for me, I shot on my iPhone and I actually shot on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. They don't have that in the settings yet, but the iPhone 13 Pro will still do a great job. And then I go over here to Filmic Log V3 and I'm gonna hit apply. Now you're not gonna see anything happen because all we did is identify the way that we shot the video. Next, we're gonna go over here to choose camera target profile. I really like the way I can color grade Blackmagic footage. So I'm gonna go over here and click Blackmagic and I'm gonna do the 6K, and I'm gonna do Filmic Gen 5. Again, you can match these to whatever you want. I shoot with Sony, but I find it a lot easier to edit these as Blackmagic clips. So if I hit apply, you can see that the clip completely changed. Now, if you wanna just be done right here, all you have to do is go over here and hit apply rec 709, and you're gonna get a pretty good looking image. But obviously, as you guys know, we're gonna do a little bit more work to this image to make it really shine. So going over here to our second node, we're gonna look down here at our graphs. If you can't see the waveforms, you just wanna go over here and select it and make sure that waveform is turned on right here. Next, we're just gonna bring this up a little bit so that you can see more information. But as you can see, it's also crushing those highlights over there. So let's go over here to our color wheels and bring down the highlights just a little bit. We're also gonna bring in a little bit more saturation. And honestly, that looks pretty good to me. So you can hit P to play full screen, and you can see what the video actually looks like. Now in this next node, I'm gonna show you guys a really cool trick. One of the biggest issues about iPhone footage is over sharpening. So there are a few different ways you can fix this. The first way is by actually shooting with a Cine Bloom filter that is gonna take off that digital sharpening whenever you're shooting real time. Now the other way is by doing what I'm about to do right now, which is basically faking like you have some type of Cine Bloom filter on it to soften up the image a little bit. So what we're gonna do is actually go over to this first node. We're gonna right click, we're gonna go down here and hit add node parallel and then we're gonna bring these guys over just so we can see our node we're gonna grab this guy right here right click and we're gonna click this button down here that says morph into layer mixer node next we're gonna go right back up and we're gonna do composite mode screen now next we're gonna scroll over here in our effects to gosh and blur we're gonna throw that on this second node right here and we're gonna select that second node we're gonna go over here and turn this all the way up. Now last, we're gonna close out of effects. We wanna go over here to our curves and then we wanna bring this down as much as we want. Now honestly, you don't have to have this turned up very much to see the effects. So as you can see, if I turn this up a little bit, you can see that it's basically softening your image. Now the very last thing I'm gonna do to take off some more of this sharpening is by going over here to our blur and I'm actually gonna turn this up a little bit. That's just gonna blur the image just a little bit more. I'm gonna do 55, and you can see that it took off quite a bit of that sharpening. Last, I'm just gonna go right back over here and make sure that there are no settings that I can turn down sharpening for in case this is applying some pre-sharpening that I'm not aware of. Now, I did leave this out earlier whenever I was talking about the Cine Match. If you go over here and select the profile again and turn on effects, and you go down under advanced, you wanna make sure you turn this on to limited. 
that again is going to make the image just a little bit brighter it's going to take away some of that sharpness that makes it look like an iphone and that is pretty much it I'm pretty happy with this image. You could do a lot more to it, and if you guys are interested in some more color grading, you can definitely check out the link right above me where I show you different options of actually stylizing clips like this. But for now, we're gonna move over to our last clip, and guess what? Since we already color graded this guy and they came from the same environment, all we have to do is right click and hit apply grade, and we're done. You can actually do this on all of your clips and just copy over the grade and then adjust as needed. I actually think that this looks pretty good, so I'm not gonna do any adjustments at all. I'm really happy with this image and how it came out. If you guys have any questions, please ask me in the comment section below, or if you have any video ideas that you guys would like to see on this channel, you can actually submit them below using a link in the description that actually allows you to submit those video ideas so that I can see them and possibly make them on this channel. Now with that being said, if you guys are interested in some more mobile content creation, or you're interested in the new Filmic Pro V7, then go ahead and check out this playlist right over here.